UW360 is proudly supported by BECU, a not-for-profit, member-owned credit union. Pacific Office Automation, copy, print, workflow, and IT. Problem solved. This biorobotics laboratory on the University of Washington campus is, like most science labs, it's cluttered and a little messy. But this mayhem of inventiveness is the birthplace of a robot that might change the face of surgery. It goes by the name of Raven. We started uh, developing this technology in about 2001, 2002, and we got a grant from the Army to develop a prototype for a surgical robot you could deploy in the field and take care of combat casualties. Now the use of robotics for surgery is not especially new. Commercial surgical robots are in common use, but the UW team realized Raven had advantages to researchers over commercially available models. The commercial device is an excellent robot, but it's got two problems from a researcher's point of view. One is that it's a closed software system, so you can't write code for it. And the second one is it costs $1.8 million, and so even if you could write the code, you have to raise that money. On top of each motor, there's a sensor here. So the um, National Design Science Foundation funded us to build seven systems that can be put into labs at seven universities that are all already doing research on advanced surgical robotics. The second generation Raven, Raven 2, is now in the hands of seven research universities. They will all collaborate and exchange information to advance surgical robotics. It's a pretty complex system. There's a lot to keep track of. A compact combination of computer code, motors, gears, and custom electronics, Raven 2 is the child of an interdisciplinary team, which includes a number of surgeons. And that's very, very critical. You know, we engineers can kind of guess what surgeons need, but guessing doesn't work at all. Well done. Dr. Tom Linvey is one of the surgeons working with the Raven team. He regularly uses robotics to perform surgeries inside the body cavity using minimally invasive incisions. Robotic surgery is fairly convincingly uh, demonstrated that it has a role in intracavity surgery. And because of the precision and the instrumentation, I believe that we're eventually going to use robotic surgery for open surgery. Raven 2 will help researchers push the frontiers of robotic surgery in ways that boggle the mind. Berkeley is using Raven 2 to develop a surgical robot that will learn what a surgeon is doing and try to copy it. Harvard is working on a robot that will track the surface of a beating heart. The visual system will sort of subtract off the heartbeat motion. So the surgeon is operating on the surgeon on what appears to be a fixed heart but it's actually beating. And that's potentially really huge because it take, means the patient doesn't have to go on the heart-lung machine during heart surgery. Whether it's improvements in telesurgery, where a surgeon in one city can operate on a patient in another city, or a robot that closes an incision with precisely knotted sutures, the researchers using Raven 2 hope to fast-track advances through collaboration and a healthy dose of competition. We're all sharing, we're all collaborating, and also c competing. And so, uh, who's gonna be the first with that new feature? Um, I think competition is gonna give us a little kick and make everything go faster, in addition to the collaboration. So, there are many, many wheels that won't have to be reinvented.